Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be doing a new player guide for Icarus. It has been 4 months since I did my last new player guide and it's due an update. In this video we're going to be focusing on missions and open world mode along with the workshop. As always I will try and keep this as simple as possible especially if you're a new player or you're someone who wants to potentially purchase Icarus. So first of all as a new player this is where you'll want to be going to is click a new and you'll be greeted with three gameplay options open world mode missions and outposts let's have a little chat about outposts first this is a tiny little parcel of land which you get to build on and depending on the difficulty you played at it will have hostile creatures on it depending on the version of the game you've got if you've got the supporters edition you'll get one additional outpost but if you've just got the base game you'll have two outposts to play on like so as you can see i've got the supporters edition so i get access to three outposts Next up is open world mode. This is where you can either play on the Olympus map or the Styx map. Now, like I say, this is where I'm going to touch on the supporters edition. If you're purchasing Icarus for the first time, you will only get access to Olympus. To get access to Styx, you will have to buy that as a separate DLC. But if you're just returning to Icarus and you haven't played Icarus in like months, but you have purchased the game, you will have because Styx only recently went paid dlc so if you've had icarus say six weeks ago and you just haven't played it you will still get access to sticks it's only been in the last two weeks where sticks has gone to a paid dlc so you can either play on open world mode olympus or sticks if you've got the dlc or the supporters edition open world mode is where you can just build all the time and you can kill world bosses depending on which map you play on will, will depend on how many world bosses you get as you can see these skulls here Olympus is pretty easy to play on, but it's a really nice map. It's my favorite. But Styx, as you can see here, is three skulls. It is definitely a more challenging environment for gameplay and bosses. At the time of recording this, you can only get one world boss on Olympus, and there's several on Styx. Now on to missions. So you can either do missions on Olympus or Styx. Again, you will need the Styx DLC if you're a brand new player or you're someone who's interested in purchasing Icarus. The Olympus map has 62 missions to do and Styx has 26. Again, the missions on Styx are more challenging than the ones on Olympus, but they are still challenging missions on Olympus. If you click on one of these, it will bring you to the mission select screen. Each of these diamonds is a mission. If you hover over a mission, like so, it'll give you a little bit of information about the mission, the difficulty and the duration of the mission, along with rewards as well. There are special missions with yellow boxes around them, which will give you unique items after completing that mission. There's also missions with these purple boxes around them with saying exotics. These are very important missions. I will leave a link down in the description and the pinned comments for you to check out my exotics guide. Upon starting your mission journey though, you will only get access to the very first mission. After completing the mission, you'll get a little tick next to them. You can go back and play them all the time if you wish. As you open up these center missions, it will start opening up all of the missions which branch out from them. There will be unique missions called Exploration, which gives you 30 days worth of time to play on that said map of Olympus. So as you progress through the missions, you will open up more and more of Olympus and you'll get access to more exploration missions. Be warned though, these will last 30 real life days. You'll still have to get back to your drop pod or you will lose your character and everything else. There is also unique missions where you've got to hunt and track down big world bosses as well. You don't have to complete every single mission if you don't want to. There's just some missions I'm just not a fan of, so I haven't done them. What I've done is I still can unlock everything, but I just don't get the tick next to them after I've done a certain mission. The exact same goes for sticks. So as you can see, if I click on sticks, yeah, it'll bring up a warning. Sticks is a harsh environment with difficult weather, aggressive creatures and harder missions. Let's just go ahead and confirm that. As you can see, there's not as many sticks missions, but these are a lot more difficult than the standard Olympus missions. Now that I've showed you open world missions and outposts, time to jump into this join button here once you've clicked the join button you will see this screen here if you've got any friends playing Icarus right now and they're not private you will see their server here on the peer-to-peer -peer. 
but you can also host and rent your own dedicated servers for Icarus. To see them though, you will have to click dedicated servers beta in the upper right hand corner and this will populate all of the current servers for Icarus. On the screen here you will also say resume and load. So if you disconnect from Icarus and you go away and then you want to boot up the game again, You'll just click that resume button and it'll take you to your last saved game on that character. If you have multiple saves and you came back to the station, you can load a save from here with your character. Next up is talents. These are the things that's going to build your character and make it unique. In the top right corner, you'll see talents and solo. Let's just assume you're playing with friends, okay? You will get certain talents which will aid you and your friends when you're in a certain area or help you grow better crops in your crop plots and stuff like that if you have the right cooking and farming skills. As you can see here, you have resources, hunting, cooking and farming. So this will be for your resource gathering and holding certain resources so you get better carry weight. Hunting, self-explanatory, you'll become a better hunter if you unlock any of these. Now let's click on adventure at the top. These will increase your base health, base stamina, and your endurance during storms and stuff like that so you get a better stamina regen. Husbandry. This is relatively new as this is the thing that's going to be aiding you when you want to feed a mount or tame a mount. You can still tame a mount perfectly fine without having any husbandry unlocked so don't worry. Next up this is brand new to the game the fishing module. This came in the Galileo update so that's all the aspects of fishing. Next up is Habitation. Now this is, I don't really invest in any of this, I never have done. If you have a steady group of players and you want to build your own unique people who do their certain roles, it makes perfect sense to have a builder or someone who can put out fires quicker or get better pickaxes so they can mine longer and stuff like that. Next up is Combat. My advice would be specialize in one weapon and run with it. For me, it's bows and crossbows, so I've got them maxed out. But I can still use spears, blades and firearms, but I'll just not be proficient in them. I'll touch on more on the bow in a little bit. So that's the talents if you want to play with friends. You can still do all them talents and you're absolutely fine even if you play solo. But there is a solo menu as well for your talents. When you're playing solo, you'll get all of these buffs, okay? Well, the ones you decide to unlock. But let's just say you're playing solo one day and your friend wants to join you on your game. The minute your friend joins, you'll lose all of your solo buffs. And that's when your talents will kick in and start getting shared with your friend if you've got any talents that share anything with you other players in your party. If you're a diehard solo lone wolf player, you definitely want to invest into your solo points. Now you don't get all your points straight away for your talents and your solo points. You will get them incrementally as you level up. The max level right now in game is level 60 and you'll get talent points every few levels. And you'll also get some called blueprint points, which I'm going to be touching on in a moment. And you'll also get solo points every now and then as well. So you need to plan accordingly. Now it's time to take a look at the tech tree. This is where it houses all of your blueprints. Let's take a look at the tech tree. In the upper left, it'll tell you how many blueprints you've currently got. You will get blueprints every time you level. It's not like talents. You will not get these incrementally. When you level, you'll get blueprint points. And it's broken up into four tiers. Tier 1, Tier 2, Tier 3 and Tier 4. Tier 1, you want to think of kind of primitive caveman kind of technology. Tier 2, it kind of advances to the point where you can start smelting ore. Tier 3 is a bit more advanced. This is where you can start altering your armor, making wire, electronics. Tier 4, this is where all the high techy tech stuff is. Like the vapor condenser, better bows, hunting rifle. The water wheel, solar panels, the electric furnace. You get the drift. This is where all the high tech stuff is. Regarding the tiers in Icarus, you can't just jump from tier 1 to tier 4. There is a steady level progression getting from tier 1 to tier 4. So I've gone ahead and just created a new character to show you what it looks like as a brand new player. As you can see in tier 1, you will have access to the wood pile, stone pile, stone axe and the stone pickaxe. Everything else is blocked out. 
or level required. As you can see at the top, tier 2 is redded out along with 3 and 4. The required level to unlock tier 2 is level 10. And to unlock tier 3 is level 20. And to unlock tier 4 is level 30. There will be unique blueprints which only can be unlocked via certain talents. For example, requires talent would break down before you can unlock the stick blueprint. Requires talent lever breakdown so you can start making rope from lever for example. I wouldn't worry about not getting enough blueprint points in this game. You get more than enough blueprint points to unlock everything if you wish. It's the talent points and the solo talent points which you have to plan accordingly. Another new item which has recently been added in the big Galileo update is the field guide. This is where it'll tell you everything you need to know about animals that you've discovered in the world on Olympus and if you've got the DLC for sticks, for sticks along with your fishing record and all of the fishing information you've got. You can also get unique achievements for these as well. So if you catch all the fish and all that good stuff, I'm not much of an achievement hunter, but I know a lot of people who are, and this would probably appeal to you. Before we go into the workshop, in the top left hand corner, you will see currencies. The first currency is called Ren. This is what you get from completing every single mission in Icarus. And the next one is Exotics. This is a unique currency where you've got to mine something called exotic matter in the game world with an extractor. And you will have to get them back to the station so you can accrue them and buy nice items, which I'm about to show you. So now we want to go and be taking a look at the workshop. As you can see, this is brand, brand new, this layout. This is far superior than it, what it used to look like. It used to look like an absolute spaghetti mess, which made no sense. We've got environmental suits at the top. This is the thing you're going to wear, which gives you additional bonuses and allows you to drink and hold food and water on your person in your environmental suit. The next up is armors, self-explanatory. This is where your backpacks are and all your armors. Modules, so speed modules, world boss modules, gadgets. So this is going to be your canteen, along with your O2 tank. To give you an example how this works, you will have to unlock all of these bows here to get to this bow here. Now, I've only got this Larkwell Martinez bow unlocked because my information has been migrated over from the old workshop skill queue, how it used to look like. Now that they've rebalanced it, I'm retaining my old information, but if I wanted to go through this process again, I would have to unlock this bow, this bow, this bow, to unlock this bow. Remember when I said there's Ren and an Exotics for his currencies? This is where you get to spend them all in this workshop. The only time you can purchase anything from the workshop is when you're at the station. You can never purchase anything from the workshop as the time of recording this video. So for example, if I wanted to buy this IC1 extractor, it would cost me 300 Exotics. That's them resources here in the top left. And it would cost 500 Exotics to craft it. Some items cost Ren only and some items cost Ren and Exotics. Once you've bought an item off the workshop it will go into your loadout. It'll get stored in your loadout and you can take it down with you onto a planet, mission, open world mode or whatever you want to do. They are permanent only if you ensure them. If you die and you fail to retrieve your stuff from the planet you've lost them. No sugar coating it you will lose them if you don't insure them and you die on the planet and you get in your dropship and you leave anything behind, you've lost it. You can insure your stuff on some missions where you can retain them. Now, you also can insure your stuff on open world mode and you'll get them back on open world mode. It's absolutely fine. On open world mode, you can get in your dropship, go back to the station and come back down. Absolutely fine. But you cannot do that on missions. As you can see, these are all of the items I've currently bought and are stored here in my loadout. As you can see here on the right, these are my insured items and uninsured items here. Yeah. If you've got multiple items down on a planet, they will all be listed here regardless of what character you're currently playing on. As you can see here, I've got Fortazar YT, Fortazar and Spear Fort. Now on to patches. Icarus does a patch every single Friday. It might be either quality of life fixes or it might be content or it might be a mixture of both. So there's always content being added on a Friday in some shape or form. 
There is a big content update, which is every three months, which introduces all the new big features. And they're all named as well. We've just had the first big content update called Galileo, which is the first three items on this list which was fishing, beastry, and achievements. And the next big update is going to be called Hypatia, and that's going to have open world missions, biolab research, and orbital exchange introduced into the Hypatia patch. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you did find this helpful. This is a complete updated guide to get you started in Icarus. It is so you can find your way around the UI and you know what everything is. If you did find this video helpful and you want to consider supporting me, you can always become a member or a supporter over on my Ko-Fi page. The link is down in the pinned comments. As always guys, leave a like on this video, subscribe to the channel.